And we're back, YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. As always, I appreciate that. Gilbert Goodmate and the Mushroom of Fungoria is a point-and-click adventure game from 2001. A time when point-and-click adventure games and as a genre kind of died that started in the late 90s and early 2000s. This game got a re-release on Steam in 2015, so let's see if it holds up. Well, this being a point-and-click adventure game, it is heavily inspired by the likes of the classic Monkey Island games. And you can tell, I mean, if your game is called Gilbert Goodmate and the Mushroom of Fangoria, I mean, the title says it all. It's, it's really wacky, it's humorous, which I like, because humor is a very rare ingredient in games nowadays. So in this game, you play Gilbert Goodmate, who is a young lad who has to retrieve the mythical mushroom that was stolen. So yeah, that's sort of the mystery that's going on. And the game features some gorgeous backdrops. I really like them. They're very colorful and bits and pieces of the screens are animated, which is a nice touch. The actual characters and the animations of the characters look kind of basic, sort of hand-drawn, crude, amateuristic, and not very polished. So that's kind of unfortunate, but it might be a matter of taste. So yeah, so what do you do in a point-and-click adventure game? Well, you walk around from screen to screen, trying to interact with the environment, with characters and finding items and interactions like that are done with a very intuitive mouse driven interface. It's very convenient. So you can look at things, you can pick items up and picking items up and using items is, is a very big part of this game. I'll, I'll talk about that a little later. And you have to converse with characters, which is actually quite a blast because these characters, I mean, they're so wacky and, and so there's a, a good variety of characters and they're all different and, and all kind of crazy. And it's just so much fun just to, just to talk and, and, and kind of deplate all the uh, conversation options. Uh, sometimes it's a bit long stretched, but it's always witty and again humorous. And the voice acting of all these characters is just excellent, really well, well very well done. Big corn cob. Well, part of it's right good decomposed compost. And part of it's known where to now the point of the point-and-click adventure game is of course the puzzles and you know this game is was is kind of stuck in the old conventions the, the puzzles range from the logical in the beginning to the more head scratching ones later on partly because again the, the game is so silly and that is kind of to be expected I'm, I'm okay with some wacky puzzles but the problem here is that the puzzles are mainly inventory or object-oriented puzzles. So you're gonna run into some brick walls in this game because, again, as I said, you need to collect items and sometimes it's easy to overlook an item uh, as you are sort of pixel hunting through the environments. I mean, most of the items you can tell that they're there and you can pick them up, but sometimes they're not really. And sometimes an item at one time in the game is not there and some other time it pops up in the screen later on you can't tell you just have to stumble upon it actually and also characters have a lot to say as i said and it's all funny and, and humorous but sometimes you need to uh talk to them again and really deplete all their conversation options to get a specific item also there's a puzzle where some some guys is is using a knife and you have to wait for him to fall asleep and then pick up the knife which means that you have to move away for some time and come back later so it's it is kind of you know it's that sort of a game where there isn't a whole lot of, lot of direction it's not always clear what you will be doing or need to be doing it is some somewhat confusing at times again it's easy to overlook an item so yeah it's it's kind of like all right so this is the main quest and you need to talk to a character and you talk to the character and he has a sort of sub quest and you got to do that so it's easily it's also easy to 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 lose the thread of what you should be doing and the inventory with all the items that you can pick up in this game can be cluttered quite easily and sometimes you just have to click through like three pages full of objects 
uh, because the possibility exists that all these objects you're gonna need at some point so you'll be trying a lot of these objects on characters you'll be trying to combine items in order to maybe create new ones so that will take a lot of time and I think a lot of people won't have the patience anymore for this kind of trial and error uh, gameplay so I really have a conflicting feelings about this game on one hand it's just so funny it's so witty it looks great and you just want to see how the story goes so it's it's really funny it's it's great but on the other hand the puzzles and the item management is just it feels so old and really this game is really an interesting case study as it came out as i said in 2001 when this genre sort of was dying because of the difficulty of those games and the old conventions of finding and focusing on items and the lack of hints that you have nowadays in, in, in more modern adventure games. Yeah, and I think nowadays, as I said, nobody's going to sit down for hours and hours and try to solve one specific puzzle. I think this game is best enjoyed just sitting down, you know, chilling uh, with a walkthrough in hand. And if you just get stuck, you can resort to that. So yeah, that's what I think of Gilbert Goodmate. So let me know what you think. Subscribe, like, leave comments, and see you in the next video.